Hey guys, Taiki here, and in this video, I'll be going over Keeper DAO, the most undervalued project in DeFi. If you like the content, please like and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section below. So let's get started. So the goal of this channel is threefold. First, I don't think that, you know, crypto is all about trying to catch pumps and dodging dumps. I think it's possible to invest in fundamentally sound projects that will accrue value over time. And by doing so, we can avoid panic selling when a dump happens and, you know, really believing in the long term of the project and therefore, you know, seeing it through. Uh, as a reminder, none of this is financial advice. And for full disclosure, I do own Keeper DAO tokens. So this is the overview of this video. It'll be short and sweet. First, I'll be looking at Token Terminal, which is a free tool that you know, I advise all of you to use. And then looking at Keeper DAO's revenue and price to sales ratio. And the cool thing about this video is that I'm not some random mood boy giving you know ten thousand dollar price targets because Keeper DAO is a cool project and yada yada yada. I'm just looking at the data and conveying the information to you. And you know by doing so, we can look at Keeper DAO's relative valuation compared to other pro protocols, and you know start to wonder how quickly can repricings happen if the market catches on. So. If you don't know what Token Terminal is, it's basically, right now it's a free free platform to use, so they're gonna start charging, I don't know when, but right now it's free. Uh, but they basically let you track uh, on-chain uh, traditional financial metrics on crypto assets. So for example, if you look at the Terminal uh, tab, you can look at the revenue of all the protocols that are listed on Token Terminal. And if you look deeply, uh, you can see, and I, I just filter for the top 10 protocols that are generating the most amount of money, on DeFi, on Ethereum, also Bitcoin as well. But you know, you see that Keeper DAO is currently the seventh protocol that's generating the most revenue. So if you look at this, you know, in the past twenty four hours, Keeper DAO made three hundred eighty thousand dollars. In the past seven days, it's made two million dollars. In the past thirty days, it's made thirteen million dollars. And just look at the other pro projects on there, right? So other than Ethereum Bitcoin, there's Uniswap, you know, the blue chip that's making, you know, $100 million in the past 30 days. And there's SushiSwap making $45 million. Hmm, maybe SushiSwap is undervalued. And then you look at, you know, what's right under Keeper DAO, which is Aave, which is the top three DeFi uh, coin in the market. And you look at Keeper DAO, and it's making more money every single day than Aave. But Keeper DAO's valuation is really, really low. And I showed this in the last video as well, but if you look at, you know, the price to sales ratio, Keeper DAO is just, it's such a deep value play if you just look at the you know, price to sales ratio. Um, obviously, there are other factors in play that, you know, give a token its price, you know, like what does the token do, what, what are the tokenomics, etc. But looking at this, I can't possibly imagine a scenario where, you know, Keeper DAO is not undervalued. And the, how the price to sales ratio is calculated is that it looks at, uh, the crypto's total market cap and uh, divided by its annualized revenue. And the revenue is calculated uh, by uh, the simple 30-day moving average. So it's not, it's like actual numbers. It could keep her down is actually making a lot of money. And it seems like the market is undervaluing, look, undervaluing Rook, or at least is overlooking it to some extent. And it makes you wonder, you know, if the market is actually just overlooking Rook, and no one fully understands it. And maybe because this, maybe this happens because you know Sushi Swap, Uniswap, Aave, you know they're they're easy to understand, right? They're like AMMs and the others are lending market, but Rook is this DeFi liquidity underwriter. Like it, it's really hard to understand. So maybe, maybe, just people don't understand Rook yet, and keep her down. And when asking myself this question, I looked at other projects that in the past were severely undervalued, and how quickly did those projects pump so one i like to look at is pancake swap this is like a uniswap fork that's on binance smart chain and from the bottom it literally rallied 5300 percent now i'm not saying that keeper dao is going to do this uh, likelihood of that happening is uh, really low because keeper dao is already around a 500 million dollar protocol but you, you can see that from november to where we are now like this is how quickly repricings can happen in DeFi. As long as smart people catch on and start pumping money into, you know, projects and buying tokens, you know, these things happen. And like I said, sushi swap, you know, like this chart is just kind of horrifying because this thing can just dump 50% and like it wouldn't bat an eye. But, you know, from the bottom in November, it rallied 4,000%. And looking at these numbers, it makes you wonder, hmm, what happens if repricings do happen on Rook? 
can it really pump that much? And I think the answer is yes. Uh, is it going to have 4,000% pumps? I don't think so, just because the market cap of Rook is already relatively high. But, you know, I think Rook, looking at just like pre revenue price to sales ratio, is just severely undervalued. And I think it is a token worth holding on to. Now, I was going to make this um, in another video, but one cool thing you can do with Rook is you can you know, provide liquidity on Bancor, which is what I'm doing right now. And the cool thing about Bancor is that it solves the problem of impermanence loss. How do you do it? I'm not going to go over the, the technical details of how this happens, but basically, as a high level overview, if you hold, if you provide liquidity on Bancor and hold it for 100 days, then you're not, when you whenever you pull out your liquidity liquidity uh, there's going to you're, you're going to encounter zero impermanence loss and since i plan on holding rook you know for more than 3 months and maybe even more there's literally no downside for me to just provide liquidity on bancor and right now in the I, i've had this for 4 days and i've already generated $10 of bancor and $5 of rook and th this made me realize you know bancor is also project that it's worth looking into but that's a topic for another video uh, that's the end of the video uh, if you like the content please like and subscribe my previous keeper DAO video did really well so i'm gonna try to make more content like this uh, in the future this is more fundamental analysis let's looking at data not looking at you know random ta and like trying to pump coins like oh my god like this this thing is so cool like uh, this can 50x for now you know just looking at the data and seeing you know what if things play out what could happen and Keeper Dow, I think, is going to be, you know, a solid holding in my portfolio. Thanks for watching and have a great day.